Hello everybody and welcome to Wide Family Farm. Today I was going to give you a little garden tour. It's been a week since my last one. So let's go ahead and we'll take a closer look at what's going on. Okay, so y'all remember those mountain cranberries that I started a while back? Take a look at this. I planted a whole pack of seeds. Some are further along than others, but I have some in here and then I have some there. Okay, so now that I'm in the garden, let's start with the most challenging thing that I have tried to grow um, this year. That is the celery. Now, the pink celery didn't really do much for me. It got really hot, and this weather has been really funky, so it's starting to bloom and go to seed, which really, really sucks. I was hoping to get some kind of crop out of this. Um, but it's a no-go. However, this other celery we have planted in here is actually doing really good. Um, I hope it gets a little taller. It is not going to seed. Um, this is a different type. So I'm hoping that it works out and it gets a little taller. The pink celery was a no-go this year. I don't know if I'll do it again. Um, I think celery might be not something I want to continue with but we gave it a try and we grew it the best way we could. I think it's more of a cold weather um, type of thing and um, we probably should have put it out a little sooner. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll start with the first bed. This is my herb bed. This is going to be a phenomenal herb bed when I'm done. Um, but this year the soil content is not that great. The herbs aren't growing up as nearly as hard and as fast as I would like, but um, this is really kind of technically my first year growing some of this stuff. So here I have Italian parsley and it was real, real yellow and now it's no longer yellow. So I'm happy about that. Um, over here as well, this is um, chamomile and um, this chamomile here is was yellow as well and it is no longer yellow so I think it's, it was just taking some time to get established to the soil and stuff when I tr when we transplanted it um, my rosemary here is doing really great and after all this stuff that we've been through trying to get it um, to sprout um, I think it's doing really great um, this, I planted almost a half a tray of this, and these are the only ones that popped up. This is calendula, and I was told that it takes about um, midsummer for it to bloom, so um, I'm still waiting on that. Um, over here is lovage, and um, I can't wait to harvest some of that. Uh, thyme and um, basil. And over here I have opal basil. I have three different kinds here. And then I have some oregano over here. I always hear on Facebook, I always hear in the chats, um, oh, how do I get rid of my ants? How do, get, how do I get rid of my ants? And we have an ant problem, a major ant problem. Um, and I'm gonna have to spread DE. The only problem with spreading DE is that it's been raining here. Um, and it gets super hot. It's been in the 90s and then we'll get a thunderstorm and it rains. Um, DE can't get wet, but we have quite the ant problem. And I'll show you real These quick. These are the ants that are all over my borage and um, they soon will not be on here anymore because I'm going to get them off. But yeah, that is just part of the problem in this garden so far. Another issue that I came across is slugs. And we've never had a slug problem before. This year we have one. So I think it's just because of the combination of the weather. And it's either been raining or it's been super hot. And I think it's just a combination of it all. We've had some issues um, with celery. And this is our first time planting celery this year. And we didn't really, I mean, we kind of knew what we were doing. We 
did a lot of research. I know I did and I, you know, figured out how to get it started. But once it's in the ground, it just, it got too hot for it. So it started to bloom and come and go to seed. Anyway, so. um, I fertilized all of our peppers and stuff like that. So um, I have a long line of peppers down here through here. They are not getting any bigger. I mean, they're getting a little bit bigger, but not any bigger than what I had planted. So I'm hoping that they, they start to take off here pretty soon. And of course, you know, each at the end of each row here, I planted marigolds, I planted a few zinnias and nasturtium and um, some borage. I had a ton of flowers left over this year and um, we had all these huge pots that we had from our previous house and I never had done anything with them. So I put some hummingbird mint in here and um, some Mexican sunflowers um, as well. So that's um, going to be kind of, it's, it's just kind of a hodgepodge of flowers that I put in there. Um, this is here, my zinnia um, pot, and I planted cupid zinnias, and I'm a little, I'm a little confused. Um, these were supposed to be pink cupid zinnias, and um, they turned out to be multicolored. So I don't really know what that's about, um, but they were supposed to be pink. <laughs> these are my little flower pots uh, my husband built for me for Mother's Day and my birthday, um, and. I planted some uh, sweet alyssum in through here, um, some marigolds, some zinnias. I have one um, hollyhock in the, there. And then here I have planted miniature coxcomb and they're starting to bloom. So um, I can't wait to see what that's going to look like in the next few days. Over here, my petunias started to bloom. I planted these um, individually and um, they are looking so good and um, they're beautiful. Marigolds here, and then of course I planted my little miniature coxcomb in through around here, and my rose bush. This is just a cheap $7 rose bush I got at Menards, and I planted it in here, and um, I have like four buds over here. Eventually, it's a climbing one, so eventually I hope that it climbs up this trellis, and um, it'll look real nice. Okay, so let me go on to my second herb bud. Um, and I'll show you what's going on here. Okay, so this is my spicy hot oregano, and I've already harvested a bunch of it already. And um, I got like a little mason jar full of it, so that's pretty exciting. Um, I have a lot of ants in here as well, and in fact, it's kind of concerning now that I see it. Um, so we're definitely going to have to get on these ants because they're all over that borage right there. And I don't know if borage draws in ants or not. I'm not too sure. And I know ants can be pollinators, but I also know that they can destroy a lot of things as well. This is my second year cilantro and it's going to go to seed. I'm going to collect the seeds for next year or in the spring for, I mean, in the fall. I'm going to try and plant this again in the fall. I know we were talking about, um, it was just a live last night. Bob said he, our friend Bob, he's in our, all of our lives. He said he used to work um, with a, in a rhubarb plant. And um, he was telling me about the rhubarb and the giant stalk that comes up in the center. So I'll show you that real quick. Um, this is my rhubarb I planted from seed. And it did, it grew a giant stalk right through the center here. I cut this back and I cut this down. I'm still, I think I'm gonna have to cut it back even more. Um, if you do not cut this, your rhubarb can get seriously messed up and um, it won't come back. So I am going to cut that back even further because I don't want anything happening to the bulb um, because then it won't come back. It'll go to seed and then that will be the end of your rhubarb. However, I did notice once I cut that, um, that it started filling out a lot more. And I have a ton of rhubarb in here. Um, the other ones I had planted um, over by the barn versus this one, this one is the giant one. And um, I'm really pleased with it. I'm just hoping that it comes back next year um, because of, I did, I let that stock grow 
um, quite a bit. However, I did not let it go to seed or anything, so I did cut it back, but it's a little concerning. So I hope it comes back. Here um, is my lemon balm. It's part of my, I didn't put it in my herb bed because it would have probably taken over kind of like my uh, spicy hot oregano here. Um, down here, is my toothache plant is blooming. Look at that. I don't know if you've ever had one of these before. Um, they are they're also called buzz buttons. Um, you try put the um, flower head in your mouth and it will numb your mouth. Um, I am going to harvest this. I'm gonna, I can't wait till it gets more. I know last year I had a ton of these things and I didn't really know quite what to do with them. So this year I'm gonna make a tincture out of them. Um, I was told it's really, really good for sore throats and stuff. The Swiss chard that I was telling you guys about, this is hot pink um, in through here. And um, I don't know when I'm gonna cut that down, probably maybe tomorrow, and um, I'm gonna cook it down. Um, and um, we'll have that as a side, a vegetable side. This is still my rocky top lettuce and it's looking absolutely wonderful. I cannot eat all this lettuce, I've tried. Um, but I can't eat it all. And I'm sure that it, a lot of it will go bad or, or, or spoil. Um, once it gets hotter, then the lettuce will start not tasting nearly as good. And then of course, this is all my carrots. I already did my lettuce harvest and I um, tore everything out. I still need to get in here and clean up the soil and pick some leaves or weeds down through here. Um, but for the most part, everything that was in here, I had spinach and I had regular lettuce, um, Tom Thumb. I pulled it all out and it was real mushy. And then I had some um, romaine over there and I found some slugs in it. And um, so I pulled most of this out and gave it to my chickens. This is a second year carrot and this is my first time doing this, um, but it's starting to get blooms on it. You can see here. And I can't wait to collect the seeds from it. And this was an heirloom variety and um, it's gonna be super cool. Can't wait. Some nasturtium here and I plan on planting um, along in here is some Malabar spinach. We have some butternut squash and it smells like chives really bad through here. Um, I fertilized and then I sprayed um, that the chive mixture all over this. This is part of the carrot challenge the Wide Family Farm Giant Veg Challenge 21. And I can't wait to see what these carrots are gonna look like. Over here we have some Yellow Doll, um, it's a hybrid uh, watermelon that we had seeds from and we planted a bunch of it. Um, this is our first year planting um, anything like this. And it kind of makes our, our garden look um, empty. Um, but we knew that we could only do two per bed and um, because it's going to get huge. We had a, a lot left over so we did Armadian cucumbers through here and we thought well if they get big we can rest them on this fence here. I went ahead and sprayed my chive concoction all over these because um, in the Tomatoes Loves Carrots book um, that is, they said it helps and that's where I got that information from. Uncle Al did tell me about it, but the Tomato Love Carrots, um, book actually told me a lot about that. And, um, so I decided to do that this year. Um, I also did it, I also did it, um, on these ground cherries because the ground cherries always get riddled with holes. They usually make it, which is not a problem. Um, but this year I was like, well, I better spray them because they always get riddled with holes. I'm actually going to have to get out here and start harvesting. Um, these are, wow, we have tons of them and I didn't even notice. They match the foliage and um, yeah, we, we got tons of peas. That's crazy. Super exciting because we like peas in our house, so good stuff. Okay, so we got a lot of rain, and uh, between the rain um, and the heat, our tomato plants, it didn't take them long to reach the top of the cattle panels. So I think we're gonna have an early harvest this year 
um, of tomatoes. And if Uncle Al is correct, we're gonna have a really hot fall. So um, we might have more and more and more tomatoes um, going into the fall, which is really good for us. Okay, so I am the first to admit I don't have a lot of confidence in what I grow sometimes. And um, this year, um, the Big Blue House Homestead sent me some chocolate mint and I didn't think it was gonna make it. So I bought another one just in case. So um, now let's take a look. Um, this is the one that she gave me and this is the one I just bought. So this is actually doing really, really well. And I'm really excited about that. I can't wait because I can't wait to harvest some of this. Um, I'm going to be making some teas. So it's doing really good, Sarah. Here is actually orange mint and um, I'm gonna be harvesting some of that. It has a really um, nice citrusy smell. Um, another thing that really did well this year, and um, as soon as I planted it, maybe three or four days later, it popped up, was these Chinese noodle beans. And um, they're doing absolutely wonderful, and I can't wait to actually try these. So um, they're doing really good, and um, they're growing really, 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 really fast. Moving on down here, um, I did a lot of research in the Tomatoes Love Carrots book. That was basically my whole theme of this garden this year was companion gardening. And I planted an nasturtium in the center of my cucumbers. And I also sprayed my cucumbers down with um, the chive um, natural pesticide that I used. Um, I'm excited to announce that I have a bloom already on my cucumber right there and these are ashley cucumbers never planted them before i don't really know why i picked them um i think they're just supposed to be a really good variety um but i'm i can't really remember so i'm gonna have to do some research on these i don't think they're climbing tomato or climbing uh, cucumber i think they're a bush variety this over here is an Armenian cucumber, and the other one we planted alongside it didn't make it. And so this is the last one over here. So I have sprayed um, some of that uh, chive mixture on it, and I gave it a little fertilizer today. Oh my gosh, this is the Zucca gourds, and just from looking at it this afternoon, and it rained, and the heat and everything, it has gotten huge. Um, there... It's, it's just getting big, and I cannot wait to see what this is going to look like, to tell you the truth. Um, it's going to be really interesting. Going over here, I have some more nasturtium, and then I also have some birdhouse gourds um, that I also sprayed that chive mixture on because it looked as if um, bugs were eating it. So I sprayed some of that on there. Um, I thought that my cantaloupe, that something was eating that as well. I sprayed some of that, but I don't think... Um, that this is bugs. I think it's squirrels or something like that because the top That looks like bite marks. That doesn't look like a bug is chewing that that looks more like um, a squirrel is Eating the leaves or something. I'm not sure it could be it could be anything getting in here. So um, I sprayed some stuff on that as well and um, this is basically the same variety here as well Okay, so when we first moved in here, I said, told my husband I wanted raspberry plants, and I bought a ton from Tractor Supply, and we bought a different varieties, um, and then we thought we killed them, <laughs> so we went out and bought a bunch more, and um, planted them again. Well, here we are three years later, we have so many raspberries here, um, well, I'd be able to make so much stuff. Um, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, so take a look at this. And each one of these has um, raspberries all over it. We have some cane, some vining, and then over down there we have some fall gold. Um, these are just getting so out of control. And I'm going to have to start weed whacking and pushing some of this back. Okay, so this year I learned a lot about mistakes 
and I will go ahead and show you some of my mistakes that we that I have already did so let me show you real quick okay so I know that the soil isn't that great but it has a lot of potential so we just need to add more fertilizer to it and next year um I will probably add a lot of rabbit poop in here and we'll you know let it sit in the fall and um it'll be ready by next year I planted radishes in here and there was a huge difference between the radishes over here and the radishes in my other bed um, these were so small um, and so I just pulled them all out I did plant carrots in here carrots here and um, beets and I'm not a, this was my first year with beets I am not a beet eater However, I did want, wanted to make some pickled beets, stuff like that. It's way too hot for beets right now. And um, they went to seed. So I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm probably going to end up ripping um, some of this out. All right, well, thanks for coming along with me on this garden tour. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And we will see you all next video or next live. And um, have a good one, guys.